Some cars try to do it all and end up being a jack of all trades and master of none. Well, the dinky Pure Electric Smart for Two EQ, complete with an official WLTP electric range of 70 miles, takes the opposite approach and is instead absolutely focused on being the best possible urban machine and nothing else. It is, for instance, 1.7 metres wide and 2.7 metres long, which for some context means that you can actually park nose into the kerb in some circumstances because the car is shorter in its length than a lot of vehicles are in their width. Um, not only that, but of course it's got tiny turning circle, it feels more like it's on a turntable, and it also just looks great, it doesn't look like anything else out there. But, and it is a big but, the Smart for Two EQ Cabrio costs £20,000 and up, which seems like a lot for a car that can only seat two people and has such a limited driving range. So the questions are, is it really worth that much cash and is it really the ultimate city car? It's easy to plug the Smart for Two in. It comes with a standard three pin and type two public charging cable and you just pop the flap at the back of the car and plug it in. Connect the Smart to a 7 kilowatt home charger and you'll be able to charge the 17.6 kilowatt hour battery pack in around two and a half hours. Or it can actually accept a charge of up to 22 kilowatts. So find a public fast charger and you can charge to 80% in under 40 minutes. A normal domestic socket will fully charge the car in something like eight hours, which should cost around £2.50 to £3 on an average electricity tariff. And when you're done charging, there's a hook in the boot to hang the cable bag off. So that's quick, cheap and easy then, but a word on charging in the city, because of course it's the eternal paradox that the electric car makes so much sense around town, zero tailpipe emissions, all of that stuff, and yet who has actually got the off-road parking in a city to have a home car charger? Well, not very many people. So do not go running an extension cable out of your flat window because your neighbours won't be impressed and also manufacturers do not recommend that you use an extension cable, if at all possible, to charge a car. Still, on the upside, ZapMaps reckons that there is around 4,500 public car chargers in central London alone at the moment. So if you do live in one of the big cities, the likelihood is that there will be a lot of public car chargers around. So do your research, figure out where they are, and maybe you can actually charge up an electric car more easily than you thought. The Smart for Two EQ Cabrio then. What a cool little car. Um, Clearly, it's very sort of focused on being a city car. So max speed of 81 miles an hour. Uh, it's only got 80 brake horsepower. But I tell you what, don't let that deceive you because actually the 0 to 30 time in this thing, it feels really nippy because electric cars have all their torque arriving immediately and because there are no gears, so you get that constant stream. Uh, it's perfect for driving around town because it's so easy to predict. And I tell you what, actually, I reckon you could be surprising quite a few cars off the lights in this thing and brake feel as well is very smooth and predictable, the, even the brake regen. It's just a very, very easy car to drive. And it feels quite smug driving around in it actually in city because uh, you feel like you're kind of sneaking into places, like you can get through tiny gaps and stuff and all that, it's great. It's like driving an electrified shoe, like the whole car kind of seems to be really shrunk around you. You could almost sort of reach the wing mirror on the other side of the car. The big downside is the ride comfort because it's quite firmly sprung so that the car stays stable all the time it also kind of pogos over speed bumps and that's not great because obviously around town you get loads of speed bumps and of course this being the cabrio which is by the way like two grand more expensive than the coupe so bear that in mind you really are paying a premium for this but you can scroll the roof back and it's got two steps so that's the first step and it's like a really big sunroof and then you press the button again and it goes right down at the back as well for the sort of full cabriolet experience. It's really cool, it's really good fun and it does actually add to the character of the car. However, a word on the range of this car. Cool as it looks and fun as it is with the soft top and all that, the Smart for two, regardless of which model you get, official range of 70 miles as we've said, but we have actually been struggling to get even 50 miles out of it. So it was a cold start and we've done some faster driving, so it's probably a worst case scenario but it is a bit disappointing that it's not going further in the real world, I must say. So I think do bear that in mind. As city cars go, well, they certainly come cheaper, but I don't think they come more fun or more appropriate. Of 
course, the Smart for Two is, uh, well, it's small. That's kind of the whole point. But I would say, actually, you don't feel very hemmed in. If you've got two adults in here, you've got plenty of elbow room still. There's also quite a bit of storage up here. So you get two cup holders up there, another one back here. There's a useful little cubby just there, which is good for keeping cables and all that kind of stuff. Quite big door bins. What is a bit annoying is that the USB input to plug your phone in is right down here, um, which would be all right if there was some phone storage in the armrest, but there isn't any. So instead it kind of ends up hanging about and clattering about in this cup holder back there, which is very annoying. For all that, it looks pretty cool. And actually the standard equipment is very good. So although this Night Sky Edition is quite expensive and gets all kind of Brabus styling, that sort of thing, even the base car gets LED daytime running lights, you get rear parking sensors, air con, these nice heated leather seats, um, and you do actually get this 7-inch touchscreen as well, which gets Miralink and Android Auto, but no Apple CarPlay, which is a bit annoying. You do at least get SatNav, which will help you find a charger. One word of warning for taller drivers, and that is that the Smart's floor is quite high and the steering wheel does not adjust for reach, so getting comfortable could be difficult. Even so, the small boot will take a cabin bag quite easily and is unaffected when you drop the cabrio's roof. Plus, the front passenger seat folds flat so that you can carry the occasional longer item. The Smart for Two EQ is one of a kind. It's great fun to drive around town. It feels like some kind of cross between a car and a quad bike or something. Um, and that does make it pretty ideal. So if you can live with the ride comfort and with the charging necessities, then actually there really isn't much else out there that's better than this around town. Is it too expensive? Well, yeah, it kind of is really. There's no getting away from it. I mean, the Volkswagen up, is twice as practical and half the cost, effectively, on finance in particular. Although, having said that, you can get one of these for around about 250 to 300 pounds per month, which I suspect for the kind of hipster person that's gonna buy one of these and working in the city might not be too much. So, if you are after the cleanest and smallest and most efficient city car going, then this is really it. So if you can live with the cost and the ride comfort, then there's nothing else out there like it. Head to drivingelectric.com for all of the electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews you could possibly want. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. While you're here, don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel.